Chapter 1. Human self-esteem is affected by internal and external variables. Our self-image and self-expression are shaped by the information we allow into our minds as accurate. This is often an unconscious process, and most of our beliefs about ourselves were created before we became teenagers. Our self-esteem is influenced by experiences gained from people we value and respect, such as parents, teachers, and significant others. Even iconic organizations and the cultures we are exposed to. In dealing with self-esteem, there are two essential things to keep in mind. First, refuse to be passive about it. Second, don't underestimate your ability to change and grow. Like any other helpful venture, developing your self-esteem is easier said than done. However, this summary will show you what is required to maintain healthy self-esteem. And as you practice the lessons, you will give yourself a head start in life. Healthy self-esteem is a universal need, not something restricted to just a few people. This summary aims to examine the essence of a good self-image, break it down into minute details so you understand it, and deal with issues that prevent you from having a healthy one. Regardless of what you do, you can't ignore the power of your self-esteem, as it's a key ingredient in the recipe for success and happiness. There are realities we cannot avoid. One of them is the importance of self-esteem. Nathaniel Brandon. Did you know, the term self-esteem was first used in psychology by American philosopher and psychologist William James in 1890. Chapter 2. Your sense of self-worth influences all you do. Self-esteem is a fundamental human need. It can be defined as an individual's confidence in their own ability to think and hope for a greater future. People with high self-esteem find it easier to believe in a better future. Self-esteem inspires human character, behavior, and success. Self-esteem also entails being aware of your activities and working towards making your life better, which strengthens trust in achieving your values and enjoying the results of your efforts. Self-esteem further gives you the confidence to be successful and happy. In addition, it provides the power of conviction about yourself. The level of your self-esteem has deep consequences for a variety of other traits that can boost your capacity for success and achievement. The lower your self-esteem, the less you aspire to become someone of significance. But if your self-esteem is high, your drive to succeed in all you do will be strong. This particular reason makes high self-esteem an urgent need in society. Imagine a world where everyone is confident in the ability to be creative and productive. For sure, crime rates will reduce while the general standard of living skyrockets. A certain sign of poor self-esteem is the need to perceive others as inferior. Nathaniel Brandon People with low self-esteem are often insecure, and insecure people will always find a way to see other people as inferior. This makes them feel better about themselves even when they know they're wrong. No matter how brilliant an insecure person is, they will almost certainly end up acting against their better judgment because of their low self-esteem. Chapter 3. There is a correlation between self-esteem, self-respect, and self-efficacy. Self-esteem has several other interrelated components, including basic senses of self-respect and self-efficacy. The latter can generally be described as the confidence people feel in the functioning of their mind and ability to think, comprehend, and make decisions. Self-esteem is confidence in the face of life's challenges. Self-respect is the conviction of value as a person. It entails an individual's confident expectation of friendship, love, respect, and happiness because they have been treated with respect by parents and other family members. People with great self-respect are quick to acknowledge their mistakes, feelings of anxiety and insecurity, and are open to criticism. Also, they will not intimidate or overwhelm others just because they feel ahead of the pack. They understand perfectly well that the quality of their interpersonal relationships tends to mirror their needs, so they treat others well and are committed to improving relationships. That's contrary to people with low self-esteem who are prone to pulling people down just to feel good. When self-esteem is low, people easily become manipulated by fear of something that usually doesn't exist. For instance, a rich and famous person with terrible self-esteem might think everyone coming around them is after their money and fame. Because of that thought, they will let their actions be motivated by fear, which often becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and the cycle repeats. Chapter 4. 
Understanding how your self-esteem works will give you leverage in life. When people don't understand the dynamics of self-esteem, making progress in life becomes harder. There are six activities that can raise the level of self-esteem, from whatever point it currently is to a point where it is strengthened. Nathaniel Brandon calls them the six pillars of self-esteem. Conscious living, self-acceptance, self-responsibility, self-assertiveness, practicing personal integrity, purposeful living. Conscious living is one of the basic tools of survival. It is the ability to be aware of yourself and the environment you live in. It is also one of the highest manifestations of life. Conscious living is about intentionality in all you do. It stems from the acknowledgement that life is not a dress rehearsal. One of the traits of conscious living is tracking your life over specific periods. Many people use goal setting to automate this process. Setting goals for every area of your life and analyzing your performance generally give you an idea of how well you're performing. Of course, this is not a call to be unnecessarily hard on yourself. It just means you shouldn't leave the important aspects of your precious life to chance. Be open to all kinds of feedback and opportunities for learning. For example, seek feedback from bosses and colleagues. Ask your romantic partner to tell you how you're performing in the relationship and how you can do better. These practices will help to build healthy self-esteem. Fear and shame should not be a reason for you to close your eyes, but a reason for you to open them wider. Nathaniel Brandon Living consciously means being selfless and interested in how your actions affect the environment and your surroundings. The next pillar is self-acceptance. Without it, high self-esteem is impossible. To be self-accepting is to be on your own side. It means seeing yourself as capable and able to achieve. Self-acceptance is when individuals choose to value themselves, treat themselves with respect, and stand up for their right to exist. This primary act of self-affirmation raises self-esteem. The heart of self-acceptance is being friends with yourself. Some people hate the person they've become, probably due to regrettable actions they took in the past or opportunities missed. However, know that you have to be your number one cheerleader. Nobody can really love you as you will love yourself, and they are more likely to view you the way you view yourself. So learn to love yourself because your happiness depends on it. Chapter 5. Self-responsibility and self-assertiveness are also effective in building a healthy self-esteem. Self-responsibility is critical to living a fulfilled life. This concept is something you're familiar with. It's all about taking responsibility for your actions and attaining your goals. Refusing to blame others and circumstances for the quality of your life increases your sense of self-importance. There's just this magical feeling you have when you know that you're in charge of your future. And this feeling has a compounding effect. The more confident you feel, the more likely you are to take risks, which will in turn make you feel more confident. The practice of self-responsibility makes you bring heightened consciousness to your work. Self-responsible people hold themselves accountable for their choices and actions. They also agree that they are responsible for how they communicate with other people. Self-assertiveness is another key pillar of self-esteem. It is a means by which self-esteem is cultivated and monitored to greater heights. Self-assertiveness means prioritizing your wants, needs, and values. But there's a difference between self-assertiveness and manipulation for self-gain. So, finding a balance between both traits is essential. To practice self-assertiveness, you should realize that it takes courage and determination. These two are required if you're going to honor and fight for the things you want. Be willing to confront rather than fit into the status quo where you're not comfortable. Some examples of self-assertiveness in practice are Staying in an intimate relationship without betraying your standards and convictions. Committing to new areas of learning. Acquiring new skills and building your network because you prioritize your life vision. Choosing to leave a big career opportunity because it doesn't align with your values. Healthy self-esteem asks that we leap into the arena where we are willing to get our hands dirty. Nathaniel Brandon Did you know, healthier self-esteem provides better emotional immunity. Chapter 6. An individual's self-esteem can be developed when their personal integrity and sense of purpose is nurtured. Integrity is a trait that unifies your ideals, convictions, and standards. Developing this trait is a decision every individual aiming to be successful must take. 
You're a person of integrity when people can confidently rely on you to do what is right. No matter your skills and emotional intelligence, people would not like to associate with you when they find you untrustworthy. Let's talk about purposeful living, the last practice on our list of self-esteem building activities. Personal living is productive living. It means you're working towards a vision for your life and staying motivated every day. Living without actively pursuing your purpose is to leave your life to chance, which waters your confidence and reduces your self-esteem. Some people shy away from any conversation about purpose because they can't seem to understand their purpose for living. If that describes you, you're not alone. Productivity is usually a consequence of being purpose-driven. Few among us are lucky to know their purpose in life right from childhood, while the rest of us have to find it by trial and error. If you don't know what you're meant to do with your life, give yourself a purpose for living. Don't wait for it to hit you from heaven. Find a worthy cause and work timelessly toward it. For example, you may decide to write books that will help people heal from terrible emotional pain. You may decide to start an NGO to support girl-child education or reduce food scarcity in third-world countries. Whatever cause you choose, ensure it aligns with your unique gifts and it's something you're truly passionate about. Chapter 7. Help Your Children Develop a Healthy Self-Image from Childhood One of the most important platforms for building good self-esteem is in the area of child-parent relations. A child who experiences love and total acceptance of their thoughts and feelings will grow with healthy self-esteem. The quality of the parent-child relationship determines to a great extent the self-esteem of the child. Researcher Stanley Coopersmith once studied parental behaviors and how they affect the self-esteem of children. He discovered that children with a higher sense of self-worth were from homes filled with love and discipline. These two qualities, love and discipline, made the children see value in themselves. Contrary to what you may believe, Coopersmith found no correlations between self-esteem and special privileges, like being born into a wealthy home or being well-educated. Based on his findings, he concluded that love and a sense of security at home are the key drivers of healthy self-image in children. Generally, parents with healthy self-esteem are more likely to raise children with the same trait. A home built on chaos and anxiety can place severe obstacles in the path of a child during their formative years. Few attitudes of parents can be helpful for the child's healthy self-esteem. If you're a parent, make acceptance and freedom of expression a priority in your home. Your child will always desire visibility, hence they need to be allowed to experience it. Children have a natural desire to be seen, heard, understood, and appreciated. When you show love, appreciation, empathy, acceptance, and respect, you nurture your child for the right self-esteem. Chapter 8. A Child's Self-Esteem Can Also Be Nurtured by Teachers in School The school represents an opportunity to learn about life. For many children, it is a chance to acquire a better sense of self and a better vision of life than they're given at home. Teachers need to understand this and take it as a moral responsibility to impact children positively. A teacher who projects confidence, believes in a child's possibilities, and refuses to accept a negative self-concept will relentlessly hold a better view of the child's potential and help them achieve academic and non-academic success. Good teachers do not motivate their students by ridicule and sarcasm, but by offering support. Many teachers know that children who believe in themselves do better in school than children who don't. Teachers like this want to make a positive contribution to the students placed in their hands. The best way to support these teachers is for relevant authorities to make a self-esteem movement official in schools. Making children recite a speech as ordinary as, I am important every day can go a long way. Teachers with low self-esteem tend to transfer the same feelings and thought patterns to their students. They capitalize on a child's weakness to feel good. It is therefore necessary to expose teachers to basic self-esteem training so that they can do their jobs better. Conclusion Developing and maintaining the right self-esteem is not easy, but it is an important task for everyone, and practicing the six pillars listed in this summary will help you a great deal. Don't just read them once and forget. Put the lessons into practice so they stick. Here are the six pillars again. Conscious living, the practice of self-acceptance, self-responsibility, self-assertiveness, 
purposeful living, the practice of personal integrity. One of the key threads of this summary is the relationship between healthy self-esteem and success in your endeavors. No matter what you do, feeling that you're not good enough for the important things in life will leave you unhappy and unsuccessful. So, by all means, make positive efforts to grow your self-image. How do you know if you have low or high self-esteem? Again, here are some pointers to good self-esteem mentioned in the summary. You genuinely love yourself and prioritize your desires and values. You're comfortable in your own skin and don't feel like you need others to complete you. You don't need to pull others down to feel important. You're happy to help people grow and achieve great things. Do you feel like you have healthy self-esteem? If these don't exactly sound like you, no worries. The most important thing is that you now know where you stand and have an idea of things you need to practice to improve. There are two things to do right now. Be grateful for the people that have positively influenced you and keep practicing the things that make you feel comfortable about who you are. Also, don't forget that negative people and terrible events can water down your self-esteem if you let them. Try this. Identify people in your life that appear to be affected by low self-esteem and help them grow out of it by helping them to speak positive things about themselves. When something happens and they're talking down on themselves, use it as an opportunity to show them the power of positive words and a good self-image.